Hi guys, uh, Tony Leonard here for ZBrush Live, uh, doing some of my ZBrush sculpts to 2D. And just give me one sec, I was just straightening out a few things to make sure we're rolling okay. So give me just one second. <clears throat> Hope everybody's having a good weekend. It's really cool, and as uh, if you're in the Southern California area, a lot of people have probably been enjoying the better weather for fall and going to CTN, perhaps. It's pretty awesome. So, there we go. Okay, so, yep, looks like we're rolling. Awesome. Uh, anybody would just want to shout out and let me know if they can hear me okay? Audio looks good, video looks good. If so, let me know. I'll wait for a few more folks to join the room before I get started. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, shoot me. Initialize ZBrush and do something from a clean slate here. There we go. Awesome. Hi guys. Happy Sunday and good afternoon. At the top of the hour for four o'clock, I guess I'll run it. Uh, maybe do like an hour, hour and a half. Uh, hopefully, I don't <coughs> cut into anybody else's time. But hey, how's it going? Nice to see you. Yep. Uh, actually, this time, yes, improvement over. Previous streams, uh, I was I able I was able to uh, work out some of my uh, streaming stuff. So uh, we have a live picture of me, yay, and uh, my desktop capture that's going on on screen. So let me uh, tell you what I'm going to do today. So today I figured, hey, it's a nice lazy Sunday. Uh, I hadn't had much planned it, but I've been thinking about doing something uh, either for illustration. So either previously, as I've uh, mentioned before, doing some stuff for line art, and or maybe doing something for paint over. But I need some cool source stuff. So I figured I would do a little bit of sketching today and maybe try to use a few simple tools inside of ZBrush to come up with like a nice little uh, mesh that I could use as an illustration. Uh, maybe something for, for concept art, sort of. So, um, you know, <clears throat> in the vein of doing some shape play and stuff like that, I had an idea to do something and uh, maybe creating like a light uh, craft and a lot of times you know me when I sit uh, let's see if I can find it Ooh. had it on my desk here it is sorry about that a lot of times I sketch things out so when I sketch things out I use paper naturally and I would do something like this you know and uh, maybe a marker rendering or just like a, like a light sketch and I just put it somewhere to keep it kind of around to uh, keep fresh as I, I try to build shapes. And probably a lot more sketching actually I would do before I actually start with ZBrush. But I want to actually sketch something out in ZBrush and see if I could just hit like a basic shape and keep going. So we'll do that. So from here I think uh, I'm just going to start and I'm going to grab something like a simple tool. So first I think I wanted to start with a sphere. And I wanted to make something that I think everyone could probably get into, but see how it originates from just like a simple shape. So I'm going to turn symmetry on. I'm just going to start with uh, a move tool, but I want to make polymesh 3D. Uh, and I think uh, just for messing around, 
Okay, sorry. Grab the wrong stylus. We're messing around. I want to try uh, and quickly dynamash something really quick. So I'm just going to do this really low, something like a 64. Uh, no blur, a little bit of polish, and dynamash it. So, not too bad, right? Pretty simple. BM move tool. I'm going to scale this up big. And just looking at my floor. So, yep, that's the front. I'm going to move all the way. Actually, that's the Z forward, that blue line there you see at the bottom. So, for anybody who's just beginning ZBrush, I'll just mention that. Uh, and then I'm going to just start to pull, push and pull a few shapes until I get what I'm kind of looking for. So, I'm just going to pull out a little bit of shapes. I had in, uh, in mind doing a sort of flight craft where it has sort of a weird swoopy tail and I would just begin from a sphere and try to maybe mask off a few pieces. Uh, maybe use something like a clip curve. And so I'll do that. There we go. That's kind of what I was thinking. So I'll smooth it out. And every once in a while, <coughs> you'll probably see me just like do some pushing, pulling, flattening uh, using clip curve. So anybody who's you know new to ZBrush or anything like that, if you haven't had any much experience uh, with ZBrush, Clip Curve is basically a brush that it clips the shape, but it really doesn't like slice it like a knife. Basically, what it does is it it actually flattens the geometry. Uh, so if you were to look at things, there might be a little bit more pinching in the geometry. Uh, Dynamesh, as you know, it's kind of interactive. Basically, where if you hold the control key and click and drag, what it does is it reorders the points due to the shape or deformation that you previously made. So it's probably something that's worthwhile to mention to people just starting out. Uh, most novice or professional users would probably, of course, know that. Oops. So I'm just gonna... Also, some some folks know, some folks don't know, but there's, of course, two algorithms to smoothing. Uh, at least I believe there are. Uh, there's one way of smoothing where you just hold down the shift and smooth the object. There's also one where, of course, if you hold shift, click on the object, and still with pin down, let the shift up, and it uses a, a little bit more of a broad uh, algorithm for smoothing. So, yep, keep it busy, but of course, Gotta keep busy. Always hands moving. That's what's up. <laughs> so I wanted to bend out some stuff and just uh, kind of push it. See if I could get a sketch that was kind of near what I was thinking. So when I do that, just make like a quick little mask. And this is kind of for later, but I would take this, push the toggle for the, uh, if you guys haven't uh, really realized this, Y is the toggle for transpose, and uh, that goes between the world space widget, of course, and so probably as I get through this, and I, I just wanted to sculpt like a nice contour for a body shape, so it doesn't have to be super detailed, but that's what we're going to do. So that's why I'm trying to keep actually the dynamish very low. I'm not going to worry about subdividing right now. So each time if I do anything where I create like a hard surface and I use you know trim dynamic, hardening brushes, uh, soft polish brushes, that sort of thing, uh, <coughs> I re-dynamesh with polish because a lot of times it'll polish up some of the edges. It's very sim similar to like using a... Oops. A clay polish. Getting ahead of myself. There we go. So I'm going to use move a few more times. Pull this out.
Yep. Actually, I'm gonna use this. There we go. Mask that off. And I'm gonna pull it out. Oops. There we go. Just gonna pull this out a little bit more. I know this looks like a weird shape, but trust me, it's going somewhere. I always love to take like simple weird shapes and I'll turn them into ideas. Uh, somewhat like a boat, more like an airship, like a shuttle, as it were. But I just wanted to borrow some of the contours, really, because uh, I always love to try to look at shapes. Before I do anything, and so right about there, look at the other part, smooth that out, do a little bit of moving. Reshape it again. So some of these areas I might actually harden up again. I just take a like a hard polish and uh, or H polish, as it were, and start moving some stuff around and trimming in certain spots. Get out. There we go. So this will be like the the nose. Looks like a giant skiff, maybe. Do something like uh, put some engines in between. Might look cool. Here we go. Looks like an alien head, doesn't it? <laughs> but you know, if you guys have any questions, of course, feel free. I'm gonna be here for a while, just uh, jamming on a Sunday, man. Uh, so it's sort of like a free time as opposed to having a set goal uh, last time around. But I will use it towards some end towards doing an illustration. That is part of the mandate, so I'll do that. And so I'm going to just go ahead and use H polish and probably the trim dynamic. So both of these, both of these just simple brushes. A lot of times I use for hard surface. Uh, I use B and T going to the trim dynamic. It sort of flattens by the normal. Uh, and then I also use the Damien standard to sketch on the clay. So we'll do some sketching and then we'll pluck some parts, you know. Uh, apart and then kind of harden it up as I go, right? So even from just like a simple piece of clay like this, at least I can kind of check a, a silhouette from which to begin with, which is always cool because uh, I really like to work within defining uh, shapes that I see in my mind and then trying to flush them out uh, just from even a more simple sort of primitive state, right? So I'll just take a trim dynamic and I'll start making some planner changes here finding some edges and then we'll see how it goes in just a few minutes but again if you have any questions let me know I'll try to keep my eyes on the the chat going and we'll go from there so I hope everybody had a good weekend yeah, it's been a nice weekend. Getting a little colder, maybe in some places. I'm going to change my material really quick. Do something that's a little bit easier to see. So, I'm just going to sketch on this for a second, but I'm not going to make it super detailed because, of course, whenever you do anything in Dynamesh, uh, I use, you know, Damien Scanner to kind of mark out or make some demarcations of uh, shape a lot of times um, or like modular panels or sections that I want to cut out and so I really try to treat like the Damien standard like a, a standard pencil almost you know where you can make you know just really brief impressions into a piece of clay uh, and then you could you know split some of those parts apart 
and then you could redefine them by sculpting them up. So even though it looks weird now and it looks very pinched, uh, usually what I do is I just try to redynamesh it and then it leaves an impression of it so I can sort of tell what's what, right? So I'm just going to continue along. And of course when it reorders the points it's going to clean up some of those uh, marked areas for me. So really what I want to do is I want to actually build this so I can steal certain bits and shapes off of it. Uh, or at least sort of shell it out. So normally it would save me the time. Sort of like a I guess a, a voxel modeling sort of way of doing things where instead of box modeling the shapes out, I just take it and sculpt out a piece of clay. Right? Uh, and then somewhere along maybe here. Uh, pull some of that out. So maybe I'll just go over to clay and do build up. I'm gonna knock out a little bit of area here. Right. And smooth it out. So what I'm showing you is basically just kind of something from from go, you know, just nothing, and then just try to make it into something. <coughs> Guys, will have to forgive me if I if my voice is a little bit scratchy this this week. I I picked up a little bit of a cold. So it's made it a little bit difficult for the week. Uh, do I use a graphic tablet? Actually, I use two different tablets on one machine. Uh, I have a uh, Intuos, and I also have a Cintiq uh, from back in 2010. I have the 21UX, and I use both. But um, primarily for modeling, I don't use my Cintiq for modeling a whole lot. Every once in a while, it's it's a bit rare, I guess, if I feel like it. But uh, I'm not particularly the biggest fan of doing uh, 3D or sculpting on a sculpting on a uh, uh, sculpting on a Cintiq. Uh, just pretty much because I like to have my hands flat and look forward uh, at what I'm sculpting and sort of turn it. So. But for everything 2D, I rather do a lot with a Cintiq. So I flip and flop every once in a while. Okay, so that's kind of shaping kind of towards where I want it. Maybe a little harder. Oops. There we go. So we go along the bottom. Yes, I use two tablets. Um, uh, like I said, you know, just I, I like sculpting more with my. I, have, I use like an Intuos Medium, so just one just like this. Yeah, uh, I believe mine's an Intuos Five or wait, I went I went five, and then I think I had to do an RMA, so it's like one of the Intuos Pro series uh, from here recent. But of course, you know, there are some some great tablets that have recently come out. So probably a, you know more towards eight thousand pressure levels uh, to use, and that's pretty cool stuff. So worth checking out. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit more clipping, and of course, if anybody has ever never used a clip brush uh, or a clip curve, uh, basically when you draw it out, anything it's going to smash or uh, flatten anything that is on the shadowed edge. And of course, if you hold Alt, it'll cut the opposite edge. Uh, and of course, if you want to curve it, so I'm going to just put it right about here. And if I curve it, I can hit Alt once. And almost like a Belger curve, start curving and pulling in the opposite direction. And it should flatten it. Right? Also, you don't want to do too many things that are complex with that. I would probably save some com complex cuts with uh, something like the trim brush or even the slice brush. Uh, but uh, with slice, of course, it makes a poly group and actually slices the geometry. Uh, clip curve just basically flattens, so I can just flatten it off like so. Give it a little bit of uh, smoothing on the end, and keep going. Right. So I'm going to sketch on this just a little tiny more. But first, from 64, I'm just going to go ahead uh, and give myself a little bit more resolution from 64 to, let's say, uh, 
which becomes 128. There we go. All right. And I'm going to remesh, redynamesh, and so I have a little bit more resolution to sketch into this, and then just keep going uh, with the Damien standard and sketch on the surface of this a little bit more. I'll make it smaller this time. Uh, would you want to use a mouse? Uh, no. <laughs> the short answer would be no. Uh, my best experience, I have known people to try to use a mouse in ZBrush and they, they got to a certain point, but you, you're going to come to a, a stopping point uh, just using a, a mouse. Uh, the best suggestion would, you get, uh, would be to get any type of uh, tablet that has pressure sensitivity support for uh, Windows or, or Mac uh, and use that. Uh, you're just not going to get you know, the, the sculpt details. Uh, and you're probably not going to feel the, what you're sculpting very well without one, without a mouse. So I would I would very much get a tablet. I mean, with, with a mouse, you're not going to get very much detail. It would be best to do it with, with a tablet. Hey, what's up, Steve? Hope things are going well. Good seeing you at yesterday. Okay, so... Just flatten some things out. And one of the things that I like also to do with a. Uh, whoops. Actually, made a mistake there. Don't need dynamic subdiv just yet. Must have accidentally hit something on the keyboard. I'm going to do this again. And just make some light marks. Uh. So again, if you have any questions, ask away, do ask away. I'll try to be helpful while I'm sculpting. There's a lot of this, like I've said before, like it, when I'm at this point, just kind of thinking about what I'm gonna do, it's like watching uh, paint dry. <laughs> so it's kind of just a, it, it always looks great when you record things that you see it in time lapse, but at least this way I get to do things real time and explain some things to you. So you know, please, if you have any commentary, let me know in the chat. Uh, as far as the Damien standard, also um, do it while I'm doing some shape building, you know, just kind of sketching on the clay. If I hit the Alt, it'll have the reverse effect, and that's the same as uh, using a brush that is Z Add or Z Sub. So Z Sub is basically the default setting for the Damien standard. So it's cutting into the geometry, right? But it can also raise geometry up and do some nice things for certain, you know, definitions for edges. So I sketch in both ways, and every once in a while I just toggle. Uh, and do a fill, right? So right now I'll just sketch up from the, from the mesh surface. Excuse me. <clears throat> and then I will hit something like clay, uh, and I can smooth out some of this clay because if, if the clay is kind of hard, it'll leave like a kind of deep step. And every once in a while you can do something like uh, going into the brush. And I like to, a lot of times, uh, between clay and also the clay buildup, Sometimes the alpha can be a little bit harsh, so what I'll do is I'll come down uh, to the modifiers and just uh, turn smoothing up to just like one, uh, especially with organic models because it gives it's like body fat, you know, it gives like a nice little smooth transition. Because a uh, clay by itself, you know, it's like a sort of almost hard round shape, uh, and if you don't watch how much pressure you give it or the overlapping of fill, uh, it gets a little bumpy. So I just even it out, but at least. It gives me a nice uh, raised step so I can keep building up like a, a definition between the shapes. And then I could just smooth it out by using the H polish. Kind of old tricks are the best tricks, I say. You know, uh, easily with something like this, I wanted if I wanted to steal the contour, I could use some of the topology tools that I used last time around. Uh, either a pinned method uh, topology as well, or just using like the uh, topolo topology brush basically draws topology by putting down curves and I could do something like that actually the Debian standard too no I haven't tried it out that much I had I heard good things about it but I haven't uh, used it yet 
uh, ZZ2K, I believe that was your question. Yeah. So, but yeah, Damien Standard's like a great brush, uh, especially during the early stages of just thinking out shapes. So like um, between it, I do a lot of, you know, like cutting and shaping with, with the brush. It's great for that. But I also wanted to use, uh, there's a few pieces in here that would be, look great. So once I shell a few of these pieces and have the geometry, uh, or even if I took and painted masks over different sections and then plucked them out by using some of the split functions, uh, I could get the shell and sort of just close holes on it and you know thicken the piece up and still use it as a die mesh. So every, everything that you do, uh, even from a beginning stage to like a rough all the way to a, like a first beginning, second, secondary, and then tertiary forming uh, in your sculpt, you can do from just doing some simple tricks like this. So this is just like a concept body, right? Uh, if you could see it, or if I could mark on my screen, it looks uh, kind of odd. But per my drawing here, I had thought to do a sort of fuselage shape, right? And so out of that fuselage shape that I sculpt, I'm going to add a few other bits of, to the silhouette to build it up, but there's a long swoop tail at the bottom. So it's almost like a, an I-beam sort of uh, hard surface design. Uh, so with that being the idea, I'm going to go ahead and pull a little bit more out in the front. Frame this up. There we go. I'm going to pull this a little bit more. So I actually want to cut a section out and make it transparent later. So I'll just give that contour now. Sort of a bubble dome top. I always look, love looking at the sort of the rear aft view of a lot of old Navy aircraft uh, just as they take off from an aircraft carrier. It's like really cool, aggressive looking shapes as far as the forms go. So I love doing stuff like this. There we go. Smooth that out just a tad. Redynamesh. Let's see where we're at. Put in a few more details back in again. So I'm not really married to anything of uh, as far as shapes. So even if I keep sketching in it, and even if I block out some of these shapes, some of the larger shapes are really the ones that are, that hold, right? So I'll do something like this. Maybe I'll, I'll make some complicated bits, but what I really want to have is, uh, along with this bubble top here, up top, uh, I want to keep some areas where they're mostly smooth, flattened areas, uh, so we can have some areas of rest uh, in, a, in a given design. Uh, and what, by, what do I mean by that is basically to have like non-complicated geometry that has uh, more graceful contours and then uh, have some detailed bits that are probably more focal with detail uh, so that you know you can keep the eye interested when you look at the shapes uh, and a lot of that is, is really you know having a grasp of some of your your own uh, sort of like uh, visual language I suppose but uh, you can sketch into the clay and then you know as long as you have the shape you can really detail the heck out of it later. So that is what I like to do. And then somewhere around here, I have some really cool uh, pieces that I'll add in and create sort of like a pylons for like in engines. sketching some placement areas here. But I thought I would start a sketch and then eventually what I'll do is uh, take it and harden and surface the sculpt a little bit more each time. And then uh, of course there's going to be some areas where I want to do uh, very quick you know, uh, additions of form. So using a Z modeler a bit 
Uh, also, I'm going to probably use some uh, insert primitives quite a bit. Um, so if you have any questions towards that and where they call for it, I will probably be doing quite a bit of uh, booleans. So uh, I'm just curious, uh, have you guys really gotten into the new boolean system with ZBrush? Uh, even though, uh, if, even users that are probably pretty new to ZBrush, uh, because if so, they're pretty cool. And uh, I'll show how to kind of do uh, a few simple tricks to knock some shapes out using booleans. So I know previously I probably had a, a request for them. Right now, I'm just using a uh, hard polish to kind of mash out some some flat, planner areas. Uh, might do something a little bit more less extreme with this canopy. It's a little wide, so shape it back. Looks like a big whale head. It's pretty cool. thinner. I actually could have probably used a different sphere to probably do this. In fact, let's try it. We'll do this. Clip this part off. There we go. And I'll flatten that, thinking uh, that wasn't as great as I thought it would be. So I'll just take it right off. And what I did was it just flattened the geometry and pinched along the side a little bit. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll just use an insert primitive really quick. Uh, oops. Yeah, there we go. I'll just grab a sphere and I'll put it right at the center. There we go. And let's see if I can move it around just a little bit more. Nice and even. And if I want to keep it separate, which uh, if I'd like, I, I think I would like to do, what I'll do is I'll just every you notice everything when I did the insert mesh. So B I would be the insert primitives, right? Uh, so it's I M M, which is a insert multi mesh brush, and using the primitives, which have just basic shapes uh, at the top. And what I'll do is when I use it. <clears throat> I get a choice of different objects up at the top uh, and if I'm using also the widget I can replace whatever I'm putting in as an insert mesh uh, but since I've formed this really quick what it does is once I commit the shape uh, as an insert to the mesh it's still masked off the rest of the silhouette of the body of the ship so what I want to do is just go ahead and come up to split uh, which is in subtool and I'll do a split and I'll split unmasked points right and so now I have two subtools one which will be a template for the glass and then the, I'll keep the body itself uh, and later I could put a transparent material on that and maybe sculpt you know carve out and sculpt some of the stuff on the inside like a tiny little chair or something uh, get that going but let's see I think uh, one of the things that I wanted to do is kind of rotate this I'm going to rotate the body just a tad. There we go. Do the same for this guy. Rotate him down. Hit W and move it back into place a little bit. And I'll widen it just ever slightly. So I'm going to use move again. And I'm just grabbing from the center. I have symmetry on. So this last uh, circle here on the inside where it turns red. I can hold shift and just move it to the side just a tad. Uh, and I can also just hit Q and go back and use the same move tool to shape it out just a tad bit. There we go. So that's that uh, looks a little bit better. And I could use a form soft maybe and make it a little bit more bubble domed, but for now I think that looks alright. And then I'll just go back and polish up a few edges. Alt and click on the subtool, of course, brings it forward. There we go. And I'm going to actually.
actually use a few different polish brushes here. Yeah, sure. You could make a, a mecha with this type of uh, technique. Especially where, you know, you use insert primitives. I, I use insert primitives all the time to just make up uh, mechanical detail. It's, it's actually kind of fun, rather. Uh, because you really have to think about the approach that you take to uh, making some type of hard surface uh, and it forces you to really think inside of like simple shapes um, which could be you know really a, a nice addition to your your sense of design uh, you can smooth out stuff you can cut stuff away uh, and so like if you just think of like how you're composing from the beginning using a, a simple primitive uh, it really shapes uh, a lot of your more informed shape language, uh, which is great, which is awesome. It's all about all about silhouette shape play in the end. At least I think so. <laughs> Do the shapes keep you visually stimulated and interested? I suppose that would be one good question, right? So now, what I'm going to try to do is I'm just going to try to pluck out some shapes, but what I want to do is take this glass and hide it. I'm going to look at the polyframes. So it's still, it's a little bit denser uh, of a mesh uh, than it was before when I started. I think I started at a 64 uh, resolution DynaMesh. Now what I just wanted to do is just come in and paint in some areas. So I'm just going to hit E, S and get a standard brush using its shape for uh, drawing a mask. And so I'm just going to draw a few masks here. Oops, sorry. Don't do that. I have to go back to my pen. So I'm just going to make these a little bit general here. Basically what I want to do is just grab this, uh, this little pylon to the side here and then I'm going to clean up its mask a little bit by sharpening it. So I'll blur it a few times and then sharpen it again. So blurring a mask is basically where you hold the control key and tap on the mask and it should blur it out, kind of like so. And you can see the edges get a lot softer. But sharpening it would be sort of the reverse and hitting control alt and tapping on the mask which will of course sharpen it. Uh, so I, I do sometimes just to round it off what I'll do is a uh, You know because this is not the cleanest geo So I'll just soften it and sharpen it again until everything kind of jives and fits into a shape And I'll do this process a couple of times until it's nice and clean So pretty much uh, I just want it want to put it in so that I can make this specific area one polygroup. Uh, and so now that I have it painted a little bit up top here. Once that I have the mask painted in, I'll just go ahead and hit control W. And if I show you my polyframes again, I have this one area here. So I'm gonna do this a few times for a few different shapes in here. Alright. So back to it. So anyone have any more questions? Feel free to ask. Helps me pass the some of the time a little bit to answer a few questions. This is sort of like a uh, the basic part of this. So I think uh, we have 20 minutes until the hour and then I'll go a little bit longer if that's okay. There we go, so I grab the tail end, sharpen that mask up, blur it, sharpen it again. At least it got cleaner around some of the edge a little bit more. Uh, turn it upside down just a little bit looks good okay control W again have a different polygroup so I'll do this a couple of times 
So in the end, what I'm going to do is actually I could take something like this uh, and just simply do a duplicate. Uh, and in the end, what I want to do is just take one piece of this. Here, I'll hide this so that we just working on the, the duplicate. Actually, that's the other way around. So using the duplicate, and when I hit Control Shift and just hide or single out a piece, uh, what I can do is uh, go to Display and make sure that I'm flipping the normal so I can see the inside. Okay, so we have an open-ended piece here, right? Uh, and what I need to do is basically just take it and close holes on it. Uh, but I want to delete hidden first. So I'm going to go to modi type, modify topology uh, and then try something like uh, doing just like a delete hidden and then I'm going to close the holes which will seal off most of these holes but I might have to clean it up just a little bit and cut some of the edge off. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Uh, close holes, close holes, close holes. There we go. So it flattened it on the back a little bit more. Uh, and left some edge to work with, but basically I could pull this out if I wanted to a little bit. So let's turn it this way, perhaps. And if you look at the polyframes, all of these are triangulated where it, it actually filled it. So basically I could just come and redynamesh it again, and now it's just a regular Dynamesh polygroup, right? But <coughs> again, I could use some move tools. So I'm going to use that and just pull this up. Oops, sorry. Uh, made one mistake. I'm going to move it, but I'm actually going to hold control and click on the polygroup that I want to affect. Sorry. Uh, that way it masks off everything else on the outside, and I can just, you know, work with and clean up this inside edge. So I think I just wanted to move it and pull it out just a little bit, give it some thickness. Uh, I could take it and also do uh, scale by hitting E scale it on the inside from the center so that way we give the effect that at least it has like a flat edge uh, and I'm not really particularly worried about you know all of the resolution where it leaves nasty little edge bits like this because uh, once I redynamesh it I could just flatten these out myself and sculpt up the piece and then uh, it'll be all the much cleaner uh, areas like this I can kind of clean up to just smoothing it so I'm just being kind of quick about it So from here, I've got that nice piece, and I, all of this, you know, it's still sculptable geometry. I can still come in and just, you know, uh, redynamesh it if I need to redynamesh it, uh, do some clipping, uh, all sorts of stuff. I think our ship was shaped this way, right? So if I turn this back on, and I turn this guy back on, so each piece I may do something like that and be able to shape it, uh, just keeping the originating piece. And as I build it up, I'm just going to mash the original concept mesh down so that it gets hidden, and then I'll have the nice, fresher piece that's been sculpted up uh, on the outside. So I can take something like uh, this piece, and that's the duplicate. And let's see. Start from the center. Just pull it out a little bit more. Scaled up. Right. So now we can see it on top, and then I can just sculpt around the piece. Right. <coughs> so we go back to the other. Turn this on. Oops, sorry. Q, B, D. So I'm just going to cut like sort of a, a line around the shape. I'll use uh, H polish to sort of push some of the skinned overlap over, down, 
uh, so that it's under the clean part that I just made, right? So of course, you know, as I work with this, if I did anything to this, uh, it's still Dynamesh, still, you know, just rough uh, as a concept mesh. Uh, I can make it super clean, uh, and later, if I need be, I can take certain parts of it <coughs> and do like a Z remesh to it and get it nice and cleaned up as far as topology goes. And if there's any details, I can project back to that. So that's kind of awesome. I'm just going to take this as well and do a division on it. I just subdivide it a little bit so we have something nice and smooth. Uh, that is still regular geo, I believe. It's not Dynamesh or anything because, uh, I don't know. You know. Let's see. Nope, it is not. But if I need to sculpt on it, of course, I can hit, you know, it's defaulting at 128. I'll leave the polish on and I'll just go ahead and Dynamesh it really quick. And do that, smooth it out, get a nice smooth shape. Um, and of course, there's a little bit of cockpit, cockpit like the frames of cockpit that I'm going to show. I can do something like that. So let's do that. Oops, actually. There we go. And of course, you know, as you're sketching and as you develop uh, smaller pieces uh, to build up for a hard surface, so this is this is really just like a, a rough. Uh, I cannot express that enough because uh, I may want to variate this and include like a thumbnail sample. Uh, so, <coughs> kind of some things that I was uh, looking at with older releases of ZBrush and building like a, a contact sheet. Uh, all of this it would be a really quick way if I wanted to take it and sketch up on it. So if I wanted to go to ZBrush uh, and then do like a quick mesh like this, uh, even as a proxy, uh, it's such a, like a great tool for that. Um, and the reason why you know not nothing is seriously over complex at this point is because I want to kind of build up details that I really haven't thought about or applied much thought to uh, first and work them out as far as shape goes uh, and then kick it over to, to Photoshop so I could take something like this uh, and again of course like I used in previous streams I could use the ZBrush plugins uh, and use the ZBrush to Photoshop which would take like this uh, plus some lighting information and all the type of BPR settings that I use to output to Photoshop and give me you know I could do one render where uh, I have a front back and side or three-quarter uh, and then keep going until I establish some other shapes. Uh, and then do paint overs of that. So from a pretty decent render with masks applied, I could take it and do sort of like a cinematic paint over uh, and keep going. Or, you know, draw over it via doing some line. So I'm gonna take a few cylinders and put those in here now. Okay. And actually, I am going to turn this it's in the world space widget. Should be two. There we go. Turn this just a tad that way. Thinking about the distance of how far I want these engines to be. So nice simple geo. And with something like this, even if though it's an insert primitive, uh, the polys are pretty low, so I could actually take these and uh, do some Z model or stuff on it. That would be really neat to do. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split these first. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Go over here. Do split again. Split unmasked points. So now I have a uh, engine, and because they're both on both sides, I think I, the space is good enough for me. I'll come down. Happy International Men's Day. Awesome. <laughs> I had no idea that that was today. Is that today? <laughs> I'm going to come in here and use the select rectangle. I'm going to turn symmetry off and just uh, kill one side of this insert. 
skin, modify topology, and delete hidden. Alright, so now I'm just going to use like the, a buildup of this uh, uh, guy and just try to mock out the engine. I'm just going to close all this stuff. I'm going to duplicate this. And then scale it down. Alright, push this out a little bit. And that's a separate shape, so I'm just gonna actually hit dynamic solo because I want to do something to these parts really quick. Uh, I got one solid poly group for the inserted geometry, so I'm just gonna take and turn this cap into a different poly group. And what I did was just basically hide show by using the marquee, select the top, so I just grabbed the verts and the faces on the top, and then hit Control W to turn it into a different poly group. And I can keep doing this uh, for various parts. So let's see if I wanted to do this, I could turn that into a different one. Uh, but more so, I do it because with the transpose, of course, I'm going to hit Y. And of course, control clicking again will mask off everything except this group. There we go. And then I can take this and hit the X. And I will do a scale. Holding Shift. I'm just moving that face a little inward and then of course using W again pulling it out so at least I can get some nice like beveled like shapes uh, I'll clear the mask and then I'll hit uh, Q B Z uh, get the Z modeler brush do some nice little uh, creases along the edge oops sorry did it by the edge but I want to do complete because it's just a circle. Oops. There we go. And I think I'm going to move this up a little bit. There we go. That's long enough. Hit this one here. And so this will basically be just like the simple proximity. Uh, yes. <coughs> the new move, uh, the new move of using j just the, the gizmo, sure. I use it all the time. Um, and I flip and flop because there's some neat things that Transpose still really does well. And then I use, you know, the gizmo basically to do some world space adjustments like just mostly scale and then moving like the actual part to kind of line it up a little bit better uh, for Z forward and X I love the gizmo for that it's awesome do a quick uh, bevel right here I'm just gonna do a single row and I'll do the edge loop complete there we go I'll do the same for up here there we go. And again, if I do dynamic solo and pull this guy using the marquee, I'll just grab the front face. It's there. Hit Control W, turn it into a different face or polygroup face, uh, or polygroup rather. Sorry. Uh, and then I'll just use the transpose again. Control clicking right on that top cap. Using move, pulling it out, holding Shift. So ends up pretty cool. Uh, and then I think also, if you were to go a little old school, you could probably hit uh, W. Let me see if I can grab that cap a little bit more towards the center. Oop, there we go. Uh, and I think hitting scale X, drag this guy out to the very edge there. And if I hit Control and Shift, and from the outer piece, I thought it was able to be able to make a, a new center, but uh, there we go. There we go. 
had to control had to hit control a little bit more but I'll give this an edge and then I'll use move so hitting W and I'm sure you could probably flip this over but holding control again and just use it like an extrude to push this in yeah so that way at least we have some inside geometry for the intake of the engine and we have a nice bevel edge to work from on the outside All right. and I could use the polys from the outside plus a Z modeler to kind of do some sculpting up of just like the rest of the engine so it's just like you know if you were using something with a Maya you know? uh, or any other 3D package that you were using you know where you use extrudes I'm just using like an insert brush to do the same so that'll be a proxy for the engine uh, and then when I take these two I can merge them down or I could just simply if I want to keep them I can just go ahead and do like a mirror and weld because it's going along the X side so I give it on the other side uh, and the same with this one I'll alt click on this one which will select that subtool and then just do a mirror and weld over right okay. oops actually sorry uh, the other piece that's the one. There we go. And so now we have it on both sides. So now when I sculpt one, I'll have it on the other side. Or, you know, if I mess up one side, I can do the same thing. And as long as I uh, get it along the X, I can skip it over. Now, for anybody that's new, of course, I'll mention this that with mirroring, sometimes if you get it on the opposite side of the X, so in other words, uh, not from this positive X, but from the more minus, I guess, or vice versa. If it doesn't always mirror and weld, you can always come down to deformation and use that mirror and then mirror and weld it, and it should flip it uh, into the cor correct uh, position. So, so basically, there's the proxy for my ship. I think I'm going to need some little wings on the inside of there, and I'll pull the engines apart a little bit more. Yes, when you're using the Z modeler, this probably I should explain this. Um, I'm using a few different things where I'm doing some edge controls, uh, and then some things will require like using a face, uh, and then some things will require you using the the actual vert or uh, the vertice point. So points, of course, has a different menu. So does edge, and so does face. So each of these, you can see where you know either you have bevel, bridge, crease, so on. Uh, single poly or poly group controls uh, and then alignment uh, for faces I think for edge it's a little bit different probably a few more fewer choices uh, but with bevel you have you know the different rows uh, edge loop complete partial and poly loop uh, and then for points uh, this is the point action bridge creasing stitching splitting uh, Q mesh uh, every once in a while you might want to convert something to a Q mesh and then use the Z modeler for that or even uh, in a lot of cases when you're sculpting stuff up and I've been using this a lot more since R8 came about is with the insert mesh one of the meshes that you might have not noticed in this list is an actual Q cube so you could use a Q cube and uh, if you put it in there and then split it apart you know just like I've been do using with the split unselected uh, or unmasked points uh, you could split it off sculpt it up. Uh, sometimes you can even reinitialize those and turn them into a cylinder if you need be. So this is just some simple stuff that I'm, I'm using, right? Sort of build up shape. All right. Yeah, so I mean, I'm, I'm glad that you you have, have the opportunity to learn. Yeah, these, these are pretty much some, some simple like beginner level uh, tips to just come in and, and create something, right? And so once you get the shaping down, you could probably take those and just, you know, move on, right? Do some other, other bits, other parts. So I'm going to come in and just uh, do a little bit more sketching on some of the surface of this. Uh, there we go. Close that up. I'm going to use transparency. So here, at least with transparency, I can see how much... It's actually the new pieces digging into the old mesh, but um, good to use every once in a while. So not particularly detailed bit of mesh, but I could raise the resolution and get something new from it. 
a little bit sharper. Trim dynamic to sort of make a little inset here. And I'm going to go to dynamic solo. Some of the other pieces were kind of getting out in the way, so I'm just kind of sculpting in to the geo. I'm going to make a look like a little outside thruster port. I can redynamesh this, get that shape, see how it looks. Oops. Yeah, there is some stuff. Um, <clears throat> Mike Pavlovich as well. Mike is, is great. He's a great instructor. Uh, and he goes into some really great detail in a lot of his sculpts. I, I, you know, oftentimes, for a lot of my students, I suggest they watch his channel uh, as he does some really, really formative uh, ZBrush uh, work when he sculpts. So one quick thing I'm going to do, I like this plate that's building up here, so I'm just going to take this uh, and give it maybe just a tiny bit more resolution, maybe let's do a couple more details, have a nice little square here that I wanted to use, there we go, oops. Just going to get a, give a quick alpha run to this guy, some detail that I would want to see how it looks. Sure, ask me something related to ZBrush. That would be awesome. Do ask away. I would be more than happy to answer. Hello, hello. Actually, that doesn't look so good, so I'm going to smooth it out and just leave a fewer bit of impressions. Uh, give that a small dab. Work it out later. There will be a more of a hole there later. Uh, let's see here. Actually, you know, for one small part, I am going to take another insert, go here in the center, I use a Q cube, or actually you know what, just a regular insert cube would do for this. Because uh, I was thinking to take a cube, roll the 
this and flatten it straight with the widget. It's good enough. Uh, and then I'm going to split this off. points grab this cube and I'm just going to use the transpose to place and size this and then uh, take it this far bring it back a little bit this forward Okay, so I wanted to kind of make like a custom shape out of just a block, and so one of the things that I wanted to do is get it placed in uh, long enough. Uh, <coughs> I'll save that. Look at the geometry. Uh, need some more geo to cut it up. Uh, but actually, just having this box, I can do something really quick with just shadow boxing it. Uh, so I'm gonna take and hit uh, a 128 resolution shadow box. Uh, and then just a regular standard brush so I can brush out this mask and I'm going to take off some of the mask oops, there we go so if you've never made a, a shadow box to shape it's really easy just to, like a simple primitive shape and a mask is all you need so generally I'm just shaping up something almost like in a wing shape but it's going to fit in between the main body and this little engine uh, and it's not the most polished object but uh, it should be good enough for go uh, I'm going to add in a little bit to the mask just to shape it out some and that should work I'm going to turn the symmetry off. Do it like about there. Doesn't have the biggest impression. But I think I'll, I can shape it up anyway. So I'll just take this one here and I'll go ahead and get that piece. I'll move it. Hit W, Control W to give it a polygroup, just one solid polygroup. There we go. I'm gonna scale it down. move it back just a tad there we go <coughs> and of course since this is just like uh, I mean it's a 128 resolution I'll go ahead and just for giggles here I'll go ahead and dynamesh it so same 128 with polish so like the rest of the sculpt curve so you really want to get into 2d digital painting as well but have nowhere to start um, for starting off with well I mean that that would be uh, a question I think if you want to or if you're interested in painting itself I think you would probably want to try and uh, uh, study some fundamentals for you know design and painting you know from a more of an illustration standpoint when, when once you have that you know uh, just regularly from an analog way I would move into digital painting which will probably speed that uh, you know and I guess it goes along with using any type of 2d package uh, uh, Photoshop, what have you. <clears throat> but 
if you're asking that you want to use ZBrush to create 2D images, yes, you can do it. That that is a possibility. Uh, that's much of what I'm trying to tackle here with a lot of uh, sculpts that I'm doing and, and drawings that I do. Uh, I would love for the end result to be you know used for 3D. Um, is that sort of what you're asking? And T.S. Uh, uh, or T. Swiddlebach? Swiddlesbach? <laughs> Sorry if, I, if I'm if i announcing the name wrongly. Uh, I do use Shadowbox quite a bit. Um, you know, just sometimes like when I need an odd shape uh, that I wouldn't want to spend that much time trying to sculpt up, uh, I'll use a shape like that. So I just wanted this pylon here, and then once I had the, the general wing shape, sort of a contour of a wing, uh, I'll just push it to one side and then just do like a mirror and weld now, like normal, right? And then from here, I can take this and add it to the rest of the mesh if I wanted to. So with a little more clip curving or trim, trim brush or Dynamesh, I can work it into the mesh and clean it up and have it sort of nicely attached to this engine uh, but I, I really want to see what I'm I'm trying to design before I really commit a lot of detail so that, that being one of the major points that's sort of a plus like if I wanted to just simply do an illustration I could probably grab uh, something like this already uh, and and use it as a proxy uh, and then take it into Photoshop like if I uh, took a document and either made a screen grab of it or exported it as a JPEG uh, or, or rent, did a VPR and grabbed the render plus the mask, I could use it in an illustration and start drawing over it. Okay. So actually this guy, I'm going to try to see if I can come in here. Uh, duplicate it. And I'll use the move to move another copy down. So I'll have another set. <coughs> ah, excuse me. And with this, I'm going to try to rotate it just ever so slightly. Uh, I'll do it along the X. So if I rotate there, that'll be a little bit more flush with the fuselage, right? Take this out just a tad. There we go. Uh, and then, of course, I can just clip this. So I'll clip it from the side. There we go. Clip there. And do something neat like turn it at an angle. And clip there. That should work. And let's see. I'm going to mask this off. Do a little bit of moving. just ever so slightly forward and reshape it nice and clean right so actually maybe I might uh, take these guys and move them down another set oops actually made a mistake there guy down. Alright, so that looks a little bit better. And I can take it and make a wing out of this guy. There we go. Yep, good enough. Invert it. And I can pull this out a little bit more. 
skew it down by scaling it. Maybe pull it a little bit more. Oops. Oops. Wrong end. Sorry. use that and then maybe I might pull a little bit of the fuselage outward a little bit or I could shape these these wings into something pretty cool uh, I would orthographically who um, so in other words like front side view I would keep any type of alphas like applied to um, a surface like when you use them uh, flat and I would make sure that <coughs> they're large enough for the resolution of the mesh or else sometimes they can look dirty um, or a little a little like less detailed Does that make sense? Like, for for example, if I turn an object at an angle, and then I use like sort of a drag rectangle, uh, every once in a while it can warp if not done straight, right? Something like this, it goes on pretty straight. It looks pretty all right. The resolution is decent enough for this. But I have made some applied uh, alphas on or alpha impressions into a mesh, uh, and it would look like it was stretched. So like if the curve moves towards the other side, sometimes it'll bend it and it'll look weird on the other side. Or uh, maybe if you have a dynamic uh, perspective on, it will stretch at times. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Uh, also, sometimes here is something that is a huge blaring mistake that I, I would not have otherwise done, but uh, with some alphas, when you use them on a brush, <coughs> you notice like if I make it large enough, it'll be affected on the other side. Uh, sort of an old trick, but you want to go to the brush and I believe uh, turn on the back face mask. So auto masking uh, and then back face mask. That way, when you make it on one side, it doesn't make an impression on the other in the same way, yeah? of symmetry on and plus this is pretty low so I'll just flatten it a little bit just using it for general shape to see if I like it or not draw a little bit more on this sketching and then I will save it for next time so anyway <coughs> even if I was to alas come in here I'll just do this really quick to show you guys but uh, let's say even at a simple point like this uh, I'm going to go ahead and click this, just because if, it, if I tried to render this, I would get a little bit of fastening. But uh, for example's sake, let's take this and just um, do some dynamic subdivision to it. So I'll hit D, uh, subdivide is pretty okay. Uh, and I'll go ahead and look at dynamic subdiv here. 
and so it really hasn't been applied so I'm just like two levels I'm gonna go ahead and it looks smooth enough because I put some creases around there so I'm gonna apply it and come in here and do the same thing so I can hit D on the keyboard and it knows to use dynamic subdiv and then apply it again and then what I can do is just go ahead and use like a keyshot bridge but I'll save that for next time uh, actually I'm gonna kill it right here at 120 and I will continue next time uh, and next time I'm actually I'm gonna pluck some of these pieces out I'm probably gonna use some more topology to like actually use some boolean stuff on uh, just running out of time to do it right about now but I'll clean these up and I'll show you how to really go from here to getting it in as a line drawing okay very cool dudes uh, thanks again and, and happy Sunday have a nice uh, into the weekend and a good week and uh, happy Thanksgiving by the way uh, so thanks again to Pixelogic and uh, the ZBrush Live uh, for having me on and I'll see you guys soon. Cheers. Have a good one. Peace.